Welcome to another episode of the People Ask about Web 3.0. In today's episode, we have Maxime. He is a CTO of a NFT marketplace called Reasoned Art. It's a uh, it's a very niche marketplace specifically for certain kinds of NFTs dedicated for artists. It's going to be really interesting in understanding how NFTs are adding value to artists and other topics as well. Well, in today's show, we are going to be discussing about NFTs, utilities, marketplaces, and much more. And for that, we have an expert, nobody better than somebody that has built a marketplace themselves, knows how the NFT contracts work, has been in the space. And uh, I'll let you introduce yourself, Maxime. But first of all, to tell the listeners a little bit about their host, my name is Gregor. I'm the CEO of Parallel Office. At Parallel Office, we create digital virtual walls where people can work inside the virtual office that is more immersive and more enjoyable than their real office. But enough of that. Today, we're talking about NFTs. Maxime, I want to leave the floor to you to maybe introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, what you are working on, and how you're adding value in this, in the NFT space and in the Web 3.0 space. And by the way, thank you so much for being here with us. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gregor, for the introduction. First of all, I'm very glad to, to be on your show. Um, I, I think you are doing uh, a very great job. Uh, so to answer uh, your question, I work in the blockchain area since two, 2017, before the huge pump. Um, I, w I, um, I have been very passionate about it uh, before graduating. I uh, have been so passionate indeed about blockchain and about uh, the whole concept of a world computer that I, um, so to speak, abandoned my previous uh, in artificial intelligence orientation. Wait and, a second. Uh, That's the first time I hear this analogy, this, uh, this passion about the world computer. So you're comparing the blockchain to a world computer? I'm comparing uh, specifically Ethereum to uh, a world computer. And then, uh, of course, there are different iterations. But the first time it was Ethereum and just the whole concept uh, blew my mind. What do you mean I, I, world computer? I mean, it is a decentralized database. But what does it mean for you, world computer? Well, uh, the blo uh, Bitcoin is more of a decentralized database. But Ethereum, uh, it's okay, it's a decentralized database, but it's also uh, a decentralized executing machine. So um, all the Ethereum nodes or the blockchain nodes, in this, in, to be more generic, don't just store data, but also execute transactions and uh, order these tra uh, computational transactions. So on Bitcoin, we have financial transactions. But on Ethereum, we have uh, computational transactions. And, the, and uh, the outcome is that we have a world computer. Basically. I understand the analogy. I understand the analogy. Yeah. And it makes and it makes perfect sense having a distributed amount of computers all around the world working in one single network, not being controlled by kind of more or less. Ethereum has yeah. a CEO. So it's not that it's not controlled by anybody. But, uh, but yes. still, it, it's the closest that we can get to something that is... Uh, different yeah. than web 2.0 uh why don't you tell us what are you doing right now what is what is reason art uh, what is reason art you are the cto of reason art it's an nft marketplace tell us a little bit more about it and how it's different from other marketplaces okay so i joined the uh, reason art uh, mo slightly more than one year ago in its infancy and uh, I like to call it an on-life marketplace, meaning that uh, it's not just an, an NFT marketplace, but each NFT you see on that uh, marketplace, it's the product of, uh, okay, of an artist, of a digital artist in this case, but also of a uh, real life event. So each NFT you see has been uh, uh, projected uh, into the real world, uh, real galleries, and even real monuments like the Arch of Peace, which we could, could talk later. So does the NFT give you the rights, the rights to that digital asset, to that real world asset, or is it just a digital yes. representation? It gives you the right to that real life yes. asset. Because it's digital art, so uh, it, it's the NFT um, 
has attached to its metadata exactly the file that has been projected into the real world. So, uh, and we do also attach something that uh, other projects don't do. We also attach um, like legally binding uh, documents to that NFT besides the, the art itself. So okay, there so... are all the rights uh, that the owner has. Okay, so for example, let's say somebody buys a portrait or a picture and mm -hmm. they, they buy the NFT initially. They buy the NFT and once they're buying the NFT, they're paying with cryptocurrency, I imagine, right? Yes. Uh, well, initially, uh, we, we wanted to do both, like directly fiat and, uh, and crypto. But unfortunately, the, the, the direct fiat thing uh, is not working because, uh, uh, at least in Italy, mm, for now, uh, because it's um, like the payment providers are scared of legislation. It's still a gray area. So they, they mm -hmm. don't want to experiment with too many startups. But uh, so now uh, we provide crypto solutions only, but uh, it's a very, there is a very easy way to, way to convert fiat from crypto now. So that's not really okay. an issue. Okay. We have, we have lots of users that are, uh, are uh, like from uh, pretty much previous generations that, uh, and don't know anything about computers and uh, blockchain accounts and still have managed to buy uh, couple of uh, art uh, works mm, I understand uh, so uh, tracking back to the steps that we're doing we are we are we, are, we visit the marketplace we choose an nft that we like we uh, connect mm -hmm. our wallet to it and we pay with crypto now what when that happens we receive our nft and what about all of the other things all of the other utility that you are telling us how do we receive that and how do we visualize that for example well, that's actually a, a very inter interesting question because that's a uh, work in progress. Uh, the, the utility uh, in itself that already exists uh, is that you have the rights to reproduce the, the artwork itself in any place you wish to. Uh, but we are now working on a different sub project, which is called Moniverse. Uh, we are trying to uh, to define a very unique set of utilities to that sub project and based on the outcomes, we are also going to apply uh, the same utilities to the, uh, to the on life reason that marketplace. Can you give some examples of these utilities? Well, for example, if, uh, if some art, if some digital artist may uh, projects uh, uh, the artwork on a monument, and we do a, a very big, uh, monumental, huge, uh, huge impact event like we did on the last uh, Christmas in Milan on Arco della Pace, Arch of Peace. So if we do that, for example, the token holder will be able to uh, freely uh, uh, come, uh, enjoy the moment with us uh, to have real life experiences. Because I, I was there and I have to say, I have never seen something like that. It was an amazing experience. Like the, an entire huge monument was, uh, was showing our artwork. And it, was, it wasn't just a passive like uh, projection, but a multidimensional. So the arch, uh, it, it was like moving in real life. It was something. So like was this an NFT? Was this uh, exhibition, uh, was, the, was the ticket to the exhibition an NFT or was the actual art that was being projected somebody's NFT? Well, uh, back then we were in our infancy, so it wasn't yet uh, an NFT. It was the artwork which, are, which we are now tokenizing thanks to the Moniverse. Mm -hmm. So it, it was uh, an experimentation and we are... Um, we want to repeat that, of course, in, even in uh, huge, more huge than these ways. Experimentation, that is what is happening in the NFT industry right now. I mean, yeah. this is, uh, people are discovering this great new way of creating contracts in a digital way. And it's, uh, and it's unbelievable how many use cases and utilities can be done that are just more than collectible, 10,000 collections of Yes. layered images that serve no purpose except provide yes. some sort of rarity. Uh, 
Let, let, what let, it, let, you, let it, me just tell you about about, yeah. uh, about one another huge uh, impact thing is that, uh, for example, we projected uh, our artwork on Arco della Pace, yeah. uh, on the Arch of Peace, and uh, on the secondary market, uh, a certain percentage of the revenue will go to the uh, local authorities to empower the uh, the curation of this monument and to keep them uh, clean and so on you know that uh, yeah uh, cultural heritage uh, stuff which i'm not uh, an expert really about but uh, we have in our team experts so we we not just uh, do that for ourselves but uh, reason art is also a benefit uh, society so we do also this for the environment for the local uh, for the local environment okay that's uh that's great i go running in near arco della pace uh mm -hmm. in in sempione yes. so i pass by it in front in front pretty much almost every day uh one and and it's a great it's a great location it's a great place to especially project uh, project this art uh one one thing that i uh, got a question from hearing you talk about this and that is how did you guys get a chance to project your art on Arco della Pace? Well, it was a huge uh, collaboration with the uh, Comune di Milano, which in English would be uh, with, with the author local uh, Milan authorities in Milan. Um, I, as a CTO, that wasn't really my part. So I was uh, coding smart contracts. Okay, <laughs> okay. While, okay. While the more the interesting. Team, it's actually the more interesting, in my opinion, the more interesting part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're working in an NFT marketplace. I want to ask you, have you seen changes in uh, usage and purchases of NFTs lately? Has your marketplace been following the general trend kind of, of OpenSea, where OpenSea has decreased by 75% in sales or something similar? <clears throat> uh, is this in your opinion, apply to the entire industry? Not really. What are your thoughts on this? Well, if you ask me what was the effect on us, well, paradoxically, we didn't feel it because uh, we are right now on Polygon. So okay. we are, uh, and um, for those who don't know, the um, like the NFT uh, speculation storm wasn't on Poly Polygon, but on Ethereum. So for it us, it wasn't really on all of the blockchains. It wasn't just like no, NFTs no. in general. Okay. No, it was more uh, the total uh, value locked uh, was uh, is like over ninety percent uh, on Ethereum. So it didn't really affect us. It didn't change anything. We we just do business as previously. But we do also plan to move uh, on Ethereum thanks to bridges on the, in the next year. So, so we will... I have a question before you continue. Uh, uh, close, I think it's very interesting. Uh, you said that the other networks were not affected that much. All right, uh, Ethereum is ninety percent of the market. Uh, or at least not uh, not us. Not, like as a project, you. we didn't feel the difference. So why is that? Is that because there is a different? Uh, user base on Polygon and Ethereum? Is it because there were more scam projects on Ethereum than Polygon? Is it because what is the what is the reason that yeah? Well, it's uh, it's also I think the main the main reason is that Reason Dart um, is um, the user base of the Reason Dart isn't just crypto. We also have uh, legacy uh, collectors which collect mm -hmm. uh, art this way. And uh, since we don't have just crypto users that uh, speculate, although I see nothing wrong with that. Uh, so, yeah. but we don't just have uh, this type of users. So we didn't feel uh, like um, the effects on uh, of the bear market, of the crypto bear market. Okay. So you guys basically just attached a NFT to an already existing product and uh, had already a user base that that enjoyed enjoyed this product and would, would purchase this product uh with adding the nft you just open the door to more people to purchase this product and to a new exactly. and to a new use cases as well what yes. do you think uh, you being in building nft marketplaces and being in the whole nft space you've seen it you've seen it born you've seen it getting hyped mm. up and you're seeing it right now what do you think 
is happening right now and what do you think the future holds for the nft market well i think that uh, what is happening right now of course isn't good if you're speculating but i think that this has nothing to do with the potential that this technology uh brings i think that the, we we with nfts uh, and also with other web3 constructs we just scratched uh the exactly. surface this is just i i i think that uh it is very insignificant uh uh the mar the current market conditions it has nothing to do with the potential of this technology and i'm i'm i really look forward years from now on to to work in the in the field and bring value so it, to me it doesn't matter if right now uh some collections don't sell and uh and, and so to speak everything is uh they have been overhyped these collections yes. because because 99 percent of them serve no utility or are a kind of a promise of utility that's going to come in the future but most of the time mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really it doesn't really come um is there any advice you would give to uh people that are <clears throat> interested in getting into nft creation and kind of starting their own nft projects into nft creation you mean as an artist or as a as some entrepreneur that wants to make as, a collection or a marketplace exactly so, as somebody that wants to uh add more value to their business with mm -hmm. nfts but they're not a developer they're not a coder is it possible Advar okay they're not so I, I i guess the question is more about artists so they are not developers but they want to to kind of profit not to profit but to to leverage this technology to enhance uh, the way they're being appreciated in, or in i could world. have a business application and i would want to sell licenses with nfts so let's say i create a business mm -hmm. application and i say mm -hmm. i want to make it really exclusive i'm just going to create 100 licenses for this application i'm going to have them as nfts is that something sure. that's possible absolutely first of all. absolutely and can somebody with no coding knowledge do something like this with by using like uh, i don't know like for example mm -hmm. like right now if you want to build a website if you want to build an application if you want to mm -hmm. do other things you have low code tools that can mm -hmm. help you kind of mock up a website and actually do a good job at it like for example like wix or something like that you can use power apps to build applications and stuff like that do we have mm. a web 3.0 kind of no code platform that can build that? well uh, of course as a web 3 cto i'm not interested in no code but because <laughs> I'm, 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 very, I'm very high yeah. code but uh, i already know that there are projects that allow you to to mint and issue nfts and create collections with basically no knowledge uh so in many areas including uh, intellectual property uh, and uh, many other areas so I, I see no issues with your example it uh, it will certainly exist uh, uh, if not uh, if not already existing so basically yes and what about somebody that is a web 2.0 developer and they want to transition into being a web 3.0 developer what is it that they have to take into account is it a hard is it kind of a hard process well uh the the main point uh the main key point of uh, this transition is that um is that a web 2 developer uh, have to know that web 3 developer is not just about uh, developing but also being a uh, knowing uh, stuff about research and cryptography so developing is one thing uh, you have to develop less code because because uh, well that's actually not true because when uh, that's uh, that's the second point smart contracts are shorter than uh, many other programs but you also have to to write uh, a lot of tests like um, 10 or 20 percent of a project is smart contract and everything else is test so why that, is that so why is that so why so many tests i mean you can theoretically in website development or application development you should be writing tests to test your code as well but yeah most of the time people don't really write that many tests you're saying that it's more important in of course smart contract development to write tests than in normal because i guess once you deploy there's no going back is that the main exactly reason? so it's mm -hmm. not that uh, it's just more important it's crucial because uh 
of course, when when I deploy a website, uh, okay, there is a bug. I can just change it and uh, mm -hmm. it uh, deploys again, and uh, we are all happy. But when uh, something wrong with the smart contract happens, uh, that's uh, that can be very painful. People can lose their money. Uh, your project loses credibility, and maybe also uh, your persona. So that's very that's a very huge uh, risk. So you have to test everything as if, as if there is no tomorrow. <laughs> so to... good, good, okay. good point. It, this makes me uh, gives me another another question. Is there third party services that provide uh, audit on smart contracts before deployment? Yes, sure. But that's even another question. Like even before uh, talking to an auditor, you have to test everything uh, because auditors, uh, it's not that they write tests uh, for you. They just uh, point out uh, your uh, issues, mm -hmm. but the testing uh, have, has to be done by you. They they have their own tools. Uh, they provide your, their own uh, advices, but you have to test it anyway. Understand, understand. So what is the so what is the process for Web 2.0 developer to become a Web 3.0 developer? What would be the first thing that you would suggest? All right, I learned a little bit of cryptography. I learned a little bit about how the blockchain mm -hmm. works. What should I be doing next? Well, uh, as, as I said, we, we start by uh, by reading a lot and not just by learning to code because we have to know, for example, from uh, the, the most basic uh, cryptography uh, primitives starting from the Merkle tree and so on. This is just the most basic. And uh, then uh, learning also what uh, the past uh, issues have been uh, in, in the industry, for example, looking uh, at uh, known issues, security issues as the DAO hack. Um, learning from history, that's very important. That's uh, a very, that's great, that's a great advice. Uh, yes. Learning about the security hacks that happened in the, in yes. the, in the past and being aware of these. That's, uh, that's something that I, I ask all of the listeners to make a note of that. I've mm -hmm. seen this in uh, interview questions. I've seen this in uh, different places where, uh, where to test the validity of a CTO or a, somebody that is in a Web 3.0 space, they have to be aware of the different hacks that happen in this space. Awesome, sure. guys. And uh, I guess the last thing that comes into my mind uh, now real time is uh, coding, actually programming smart contracts is different in a way that you have to be the most uh, efficient possible because if your code, even if your code is secure, uh, it works and it has no uh, security issues, it can cost a lot and your uh, users will end up paying uh, huge uh, gas fees. So basically that's another uh, topic. Optimization is crucial. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense. The more data there is in a contract that you're deploying on the web, the more gas fees you're going to be you're going to be paying. I wanted to thank you, Maxime, for the time that you have given us. This has been very insightful. I just before we just before we close the show, I want to ask you if there is anything else that you feel like uh, we should talk about that feel that that is. Uh, that maybe you're thinking about and that you think the listeners should uh, should know about anything nfts getting into web 3.0 anything anything at all well uh, of course we focused on nfts but there are uh, a lot of more web 3 constructs that have to be explored for example the DAOs, but uh, decentralized autonomous organizations but i would uh, i think that the the next big thing is actually and we already know it's nothing new is the metaverse Mm. And we have to experiment how NFTs, uh, uh, the, the metaverse is actually a combination of multiple technologies uh, ranging exactly. from IoT, virtual reality, and so on, and even augmented. But uh, since I'm focused more on the Web3 uh, blockchain space, uh, I am eager to understand how blockchain and NFTs will manifest themselves into the metaverse and what actually the metaverse will become. And so for some people, the metaverse already exists because it's also a subjective thing. If you the entire day think more about something in a computer uh, than more than something in real life, you already have the metaverse, basically. 
So it's not just the objective thing, but also a subjective, subjective thing. So very, very, very good point. But you can also look at it as right now the metaverse. Well, right now we are spending our time in front of two D monitors and computers, and we are mm. whatever we are watching Netflix, we're working, mm -hmm. we're coding, we're doing our things in front of screens. Now, what is a better way of improving this experience? The metaverse. Exactly. So it's not taking away from reality, it's just replacing what you're already doing with the currently old kind of technology and is improving it by making it more immersive, uh, more immersive and more enjoyable. Yeah, yes, and the uh, last thing I want to say, uh, that the main challenge, I think, uh, besides technology and, and uh, so on, we should make it functional to, to people's lives. Like we want to actually improve people's lives instead of uh, uh, instead of implementing the metaverse as kind of a trap, which many are talking about. So that's uh, that's I think is the biggest challenge. And uh, also last thing, we and our team are launching a collection. Uh, that's another topic. Uh, in uh, in November, on the eleventh of November, it's called Moniverse. Uh, it's, we are just in our episode one, Arch of Peace, uh, and we, uh, you are welcome to sign up. We are waiting for you, and uh, and also Gregor, thank you for having me here. Uh, no problem. How do we sign up if we wanted to join? Well, first of all, uh, just follow on Twitter, join the Discord, and uh, follow the, pro the um, few. Awesome. Uh, follow, I will, follow, follow the process. Yes. I will uh, take the links that you share with me and I will include them in the description of the of the podcast and the video so that anybody that is interested can follow along the project. And it's a great, it's a great creative NFT NFT project. So I will be checking it out okay. as well. And I'm also I, I, I would also love to see what you guys do at uh, Arc de la Pacha, especially because it's very, yeah. very close by to me. Uh, Maxime, thank you so much. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us, to be with the Web 3.0 community and people interested in this space. So thank you again. And I hope to see you again in the future discussing other topics. Mm. Thank you, all of the listeners. Maxime, thank you one more time. Thank you. Bye bye.